Let's begin. I am the one and only MSJ, or you can call me Max for short, and welcome to the 31 Days of Fright Horror Movie Project, Year 8. And in this video, I'll be discussing days 11 and 12 for the 31 Days of Fright. Now, I was sick, and I couldn't quite get in front of the camera for day 11, so I'm doubling up, even though I do not like to do that sometimes, but sometimes it's necessary. For day 11, I was discuss, we'll discuss um, Hellraiser Debtor, which is the seventh installment in the series. And for day 12, I will be discussing Bone Tomahawk, this, um, starring Kurt Russell. Um, but before I do all that, please click subscribe, hit the bell to stay notified for any future videos that I make for this month, and for any future content I will be making on this channel, because I have a lot planned for this channel. And please like comment and share because I want to know what you guys think about the movies I watch and as well as whatever randomness I may um, go on a tangent on in these videos. So I just want to kind of want to hear what you guys think as well. So um, my first movie up is Hellraiser. Like I said, it's the seventh installment in the series. And um, I've been reading online like I read, read with um, Inferno is that the series kind of starts to kind of dip in quality. And this one kind of um, goes up a little bit in my opinion. And I, I thought this one was actually pretty decent. Um, there's kind of a running theme with the last previous movies um, that these um, Inferno, Hellseeker, and Deader were not originally uh, Hellraiser scripts. So they kind of made them into Hellraiser scripts. And sometimes it's more obvious. Um, I think Hellseeker was a little more obvious than this one, but this one actually was actually pretty decent in my opinion. But my biggest complaint about this is that there was a twist at the end of the movie that kind of seemed like it was tacked on just like the last minute. And I, that kind of bothered me because it kind of went into a like one of the the original four good ones and I thought that should have been a little bit more of a focal point like at least kind of hinting at it but it was just kind of made the villain like just like out of nowhere just kind of trying to connect it to a previous movie just from out of nowhere um, the makeup was good the acting was actually really good I thought everyone involved was really well done really well you know Dud Bradley you know he is the highlight of all these movies regardless of how much he's in this one he's actually in this one pretty decent amount in which I really liked That's, I thought that was my another common complaint with my with the previous two was that he wasn't in there enough and this one he had a little bit more stronger presence in this one um Basically, the premise of this movie was just a journalist is trying to investigate this cult who somehow can bring people back to life. Um, they, she sees this videotape where this girl shoots herself in the head, and then just a few moments later, after some like some like mouth to mouth kind of situation, he brings her back to life, and she's not. A zombie but she's soulless so she's kind of walking between the two realms a little bit and that's kind of like how I got it but I kind of like that so he's kind of building an army to go fight uh, Pinhead but you know Pinhead's just too good of a villain for a small time like he is so it's a pretty decent movie. This one is probably higher up than the previous two Hellraisers I've seen. I cannot wait to get to the next few. I know the, um, I know, um, Judge, oh, I can't remember the last two, what they're called. Revelations and Judgment are just complete crap. So I cannot wait to see what I have to say about that. And I know Hellworld is a, is a later in the month. So that stars Henry Cavill, but I, like I said, I've not seen any of these, so I cannot wait to comment on those now for day 12 this is the movie i cannot wait to talk about i think a friend asked me like what movie i was excited to talk about the most and i really couldn't think of one but as i was kind of looking over the list several times i'm like this one really stood out to me i mean there's another one on the list that was really really close but this one because this one was a surprise um hit with me uh it has kurt russell uh, Matthew Fox, Richard Jenkins, 
who else? Uh, Patrick Wilson is all in this movie. I mean, this has a really, really good cast. Sid Haig, um, he recently passed. Even David Arquette, um, you know, the roles are kind of minor, but they're like, it's, it was surprising to, to see him in this movie. Um, but it was just like, wow. Uh, just, I thought it was really good. This movie's really rough uh, in, the, in the terms of like what is seen on screen feels realistic and gritty and dirty because they're it's sitting out in the west and it's desert and it's just like there's like just desert sand everywhere and it's just like there's just it's just rough that's all i can really say about this movie um so basically it, this team this posse kind of goes out out into the un, really this uncharted territory that has some cannibals in there and because Patrick Wilson's wife is taken, and they are like, you know what, we're going to go get her, regardless if she's dead or not. So, Kurt Russell and a team of ragtag people with Matthew Fox and Richard Jenkins, they go out and try to rescue her. And in doing so, it's really, really good. This is like, this isn't technically horror, but it is like, it's rough to watch and the, it feels like it's horror because the things in this movie is horrific. So that's kind of like um, my reasoning why I have put Red State on the list. Because even though it's not horror, just the things in this movie is horrific and just sometimes real life is horror. So um, there's a scene in this movie that if you have seen Terrifier, I think this scene tops it. This one is just so much rougher in my opinion. Because in Terrifier, it's kind of played in a different kind of way. But this one, I think the context of the, how the movie is filmed and how it's acted and what it's all about, I think it shows a little bit more of a, has a little bit more oomph to it, in my opinion. But it's rough. And I think it, due to the weapon involved as well, it's just rough. Um it's I, I will watch this again probably today just because I need a repeat viewing just because I had to take a break from it. Um, Kurt Russell is great in this movie. Matthew Fox, Richard Jenkins. Like I mentioned these people again because they're all really good in this movie. Um, even Patrick Wilson, he's kind of really acting his his butt off in this movie because he's playing a one legged man basically. He has um, he fell off a roof and broke his leg and so he's but he's determined to go help save his wife and he's out there you know hopping along like miles and miles and miles into the desert and even into the mountains and stuff like that it's just like or into like i um, really uneven ground and it's just like it's not really made for him but he's still doing it but i love this movie if you get a chance to see this movie do it it's well acted. I don't normally talk about the acting in these movies, especially the actors on the 31 Days of Fright because it's to each its own because different horror movies have different styles and stuff like this, but this is the one movie that I really want to spotlight the acting of the main characters like Kurt Russell and all them. It's just, oh, it's really good. Really, really good. There's another movie later in the month that I'm going to be talking about the acting as well. Um... I will spotlight as that as well, but it's just like the the special effects and the makeup and the just the way this movie looks is just so good. I just really, really, really love this movie. I, I took a chance on it just because it was Kurt Russell and I immediately fell in love with it. I've only watched it once because sometimes a good movie just needs to be watched once. I'm kind of like how 127 hours. I can't bring myself to watch that again just due to like... That movie is pretty rough as well, so um, I I talked about that as well on a f previous 31 Days of Fright. So that's really all I gotta say. I'm gonna give my rating scale for these two movies. One being Run of the Mill Horror, two best watch with the group, three it's more than average horror but adds nothing new to the horror genre, four helps move the horror genre forward, and five being a horror classic. Now for Hellraiser. Um, Deader, I'm going to just give this one kind of a one. It's definitely run-of-the-mill horror, even though I think it's better than the, the previous two installments. But it's still just, it's kind of killing the Hellraiser franchise a little bit. I 
I, you started off so strong with one and two, dipped a little bit of three, and then four kind of brought it back up a little bit, and then it just kind of slowly dipped down. But this one, out of the previous two I've watched so far, this one is the best, so I can't wait to see what I think about the next um, few. Um, for Bone Tomahawk, I know this one isn't technically a horror movie, like I said, but I'm going to have to give it a five. It, this is a horror classic, in my opinion. I it, 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 Let's put it that way, it's loosely a five, because it's not technically a horror, but I think if you kind of need kind of a, a Western horror movie that has some like really decent gore effects and just kind of good acting, this is your... Um, pick uh this will be my pick 100 times so um that's really all i gotta say um like again please click subscribe hit the like button comment i want to know what you think about these movies do you think bone tomahawk is a horror movie or is it more of a, a thriller or whatever but in my opinion it is a horror just due to the fact of what goes on in this movie uh, i want also want to know what you think about hellraiser deader i want to know what your opinions on this on this installment in the film as well. So, um, that's all I gotta say. As always, uh, I am the one and only MSJ. Thank you for watching this episode of 31 Days of Fright, and goodbye.